Hey, it's Jared with State of Tech, and I wanted to talk about five basic tech skills that everyone should know. Now, there are uh, things that you should know when it comes to using computers and getting around computers that are just, uh, they're basic things that I think are just extremely useful. These are things that have helped me in my life, um, and I think that anybody that understands how to use these becomes a more resourceful person, uh, can find information, and make things happen much easier uh, using computers. Um, so these are those five things. The first thing which I found super useful is just how to use search engines in a more advanced way. Now most of us go to Google or whichever search engine we use and just type in a search and that's it and hope for the best. Now the search engines give us results and you know usually you get about 10 of those on a page but that's 10 results out of millions of potential results that are possible out there. So when you really want something specific, you need to tell the search engines that you want something exact. I mean, they're doing a pretty good job these days at guessing, but there are ways to modify your search so that you can, of course, make sure that the search engines are giving you exactly what you want. For example, if you want to do an exact search, put quotes around what you're searching for. That tells the search engines not to mess around with guessing, but to actually give you an exact match for what you're searching for. There are other things that you can do, such as use and or modifiers. Um, so say, for example, you're searching for something and something else, using the word and uh, and putting that in quotes, using the word or uh, in between the two different things is going to let the search engines know that you want something plus something or you want something or something else in the search. Uh, you can also do that by using the, the pipe uh, that is on the keyboard next to the backslash. Typically on most keyboards, the pipe will do the same thing as or. Um, there are lots of different ways that you can modify your search. You can uh, have it check for an exact uh, search within a website. For example, maybe you know the website that you want the information from, but you don't know where it is in the website. You can type in what you want your search to be and then put in URL, so I N U R L colon, and then the website address like uh, stateoftech.net. And that's going to tell Google that you want it to search that website. These are basic advanced search techniques. And down in the description below is a link to, uh, to our website, stateoftech.net, where I have some of these for you to check out so that you can learn more of them. Uh, so you definitely want to do that. I think using search engines, I have been able to find out how to do and pretty much everything that I know how to do through search engines, through the content that the search engines have provided, uh, through videos like these on YouTube and whatnot. Anytime that I need to know how to do something, I go to the search engines or YouTube, and using these search modifiers helps me get the best response possible. Number two is how to back up everything. I still, you know, we live in 2018 now, and uh, backing up has never been easier to like back up our stuff, but it still becomes a challenge. Sometimes, depending on what you're using and what you're trying to back up, it may cost a lot of money, or there's just so many options that you don't know what to choose. So learning how to back up your stuff is extremely important, whether you're doing it for your own things or uh, you, maybe you're working for a company or doing work for a company. You want to make sure that everything is backed up. This is a basic tech knowledge. Now, depending on where you are working, they may have a structure that you want things backed up. Uh, you use their services, their servers or whatever to make sure everything is backed up and they probably provide a simple way for that to be done. But if you work for a smaller company where maybe they don't have an on-site uh, IT team, like people that are there to handle your technology, uh, you may need to look into doing this on your own. And you definitely don't want to be caught in a situation where all of the work that they've been paying you to do goes down the drain because your computer wasn't backed up properly. If there's an issue with your computer and then they have to get you a new computer or fix the computer, um, you can tell them, hey, don't worry, I've got everything backed up. We are good to go. We don't have to worry about it. So there are a couple different ways that you can back things up. Of course, you can use an on-site backup, which would be like connecting an external hard drive to your computer and using its built-in backup utility to constantly keep a backup to that. Uh, maybe even just saving your documents or your files to an external hard drive. For me, I always wanna go one step further and actually put that in the cloud because when it's in the cloud, it's not reliant upon things that are here at this location. So if there's a fire or theft or something like that, I'm not gonna to have to worry about losing anything because it's all backed up in the cloud. 
Alternatively, your single point of, of uh, failure is whatever is connected to your computer. So if you can get that offsite onto something that's a little bit more robust, even if it's a local server or something like that, your backups are gonna be much more safe. And then of course, if you can put those in the cloud, that's even better. I've got another link down below uh, that will share some backup options with you. But first of all, I'll just talk about a couple uh, that we use here, which is Google Drive. Any Gmail account comes with 35 gigabytes of backup, so you could back up your documents, your photos, your videos, anything to your Google Drive account, and then it's all backed up. 35 gigs is a lot of space and even going up to one terabyte of backup isn't really too expensive. Besides Google Drive, there's also Dropbox and Microsoft has their option and there's box.com or .net or whatever it is. There's lots of different options out there for backing things up. And then they have software that you put on your computer and everything that's in those folders are getting backed up to the cloud. So everything remains safe. There are even services like Carbonite that back up your entire computer uh, for just a one small fee, It'll back up your entire computer. And if you need to get a new computer, you just download Carbonite, you know, hit the restore button and it restores everything back to your computer. They're fantastic. I've got links for those things that I mentioned down in the description below. Number three, is how to file share. I still get a lot of people asking me how to send a file attachment in email, um, and you may know more than that. You may know how to send a file, but file sharing is an issue. A lot of times, you know, we're sending documents back and forth where somebody modifies it and then sends it back, and you're wondering what changed, or maybe you send a different version of the file back, and there gets to be their confusion in there. Um, if you're you know, a couple of people modifying a Word document, why not put it in a Google Doc and give everybody access to it? So changes that are made are made to the same exact document and you can see all the changes and have a history of all the changes made. There's a lot of really cool tools out there for file sharing that make it a lot easier. In that last step, I talked about backing things up like to Google Drive. When you put things on Google Drive or Dropbox or any of these others, you can actually share these files with people. So a typical email, you can't really send more than 10 megabytes in an email without causing problems with some email services because even a photo that you take with your phone these days is pretty close to 10 megabytes. So file sharing using these services is gonna make things much easier for you to send when say you need to send somebody three or four or five images or you need to send somebody a small video clip or a series of documents. It's much easier to do that through services like Dropbox, uh, Google Drive, and stuff like that. So I've got links down below to where you can sign up for those, uh, and then also um, some tutorials that you can check out as well so that you can figure out how to use Google Drive, uh, Dropbox, and all that stuff a little bit better. File sharing and understanding how to get files over to somebody makes things so much easier because now you're not having to send multiple emails or find your flash drive and then take your flash drive over to wherever you have to go. Using these file sharing services are extremely easy and some of them are next to free or available with uh, very small caveats. Um, and even the paid versions of them are not that expensive these days. Number four is keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts are going to give you so much time back in your life. How many times are you going with your mouse, going up to the menus, sorting around, looking through the menus, trying to find it, um, you know, missing the click or whatever. There's a lot of time wasted in going through the menus. There are some basic keyboard shortcuts that I think everybody should know, such as Command Z, which is undo. Anytime that you're typing something or make a change to something, or maybe you accidentally delete something, Command Z brings it right back, or Control Z if you're on a PC. Um, so Command or Control, depending on whether, you know, you're on a PC or a Mac. Um, you know, uh, copy and paste, command C, command V, those are both very, very huge time savers because if you're copy and pasting a lot of stuff into text fields or into documents and you have to go up to the menu every single time, it's gonna take you all day just to get that done. So these are basic, basic things you might already know, but I'm just reiterating them because sometimes we forget to use them. Uh, command or control A for select all, rather than clicking and dragging all the way down something and then having it not select it properly. That's definitely a time saver. Uh, you know, always saving using command or control S, 
even if the software does some automatic saving, I still, you know, have lost documents before. Command or Control S uh, saves that document. Do that periodically in between typing things. Uh, make sure that you're saving your document so you don't get all the way to the end. Maybe have that software freeze or maybe the power goes out or something and you lose everything. You don't want to do that. You don't want to have that happen to you. Other keyboard shortcuts like Command P or Control P for printing, Command W or Control W for closing a window. Um, if you're using a browser such as uh, Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, uh, Command or Control T is going to open another browser tab. So you can have multiple browser tabs in one window. Uh, Command N or Control N will open a whole new window. Uh, Command or Control Shift and N will open an incognito window so that you can browse uh, privately without anybody, uh, without your browser tracking you. Sometimes I use a private browser when I'm doing a Google search, especially when I don't want the Google search to be uh, using my previous history data uh, in that search. Like you know, when I'm trying to see where a business is going to rank and I've searched it before, Google remembers everything and it's good because Google provides you with better results because it has your history. But if you're trying to find something the same way that somebody else might, an incognito browser definitely helps. Um, so that shortcut helps get you there. There's a ton of shortcuts. I've got a link provided below to some of my favorite shortcuts that help me get the most done throughout my day. The last thing is to use email properly. Now, a lot of people don't use email properly. When you send an email to a lot of people, people go and put all those email addresses in the to section, which then when you receive the email, you get to see everybody's email address that was in there. And to me, it's not only kind of a breach of privacy, but then when somebody replies to that email, even if it's not relevant to me, I'm getting all of the responses and I've got this mess in my inbox now because two people from that email decided to have a conversation and now I'm part of it. You can use the CC line so you can send that email to someone, making them the kind of master recipient, and then put all the contacts in the CC box. And that still is going to make all of the contacts visible to the rest of the people in the group. But now they can use the reply or the reply to all option. And then that way I can reply to the original sender and have an email conversation with that person without everybody else getting my email. Or if I really need to, I can hit uh, reply to all and then my email is going to go to everybody in that group email so that works out really well there's also the bcc option which stands for blind carbon copy when you're sending an email out to some a group of people and you don't want everybody's email addresses to become public to each other you put your recipients in blind carbon copy bcc so when you send that email out everybody sees that the email came just to them when they hit reply it goes just back to the sender you're not giving away everybody's email addresses and it's a better way to protect everybody's privacy when especially you don't want to give away everybody's email addresses some people get really testy about that so that's a way to be sending email and be a little bit more professional about it other things is that if you're sending multiple items as attachments in an email, keep in mind, as I mentioned earlier, most email clients have a 10 megabyte limit. Uh, when you're sending images, you want to make sure that you use the attachment feature. A lot of times you can drag and drop an image into an email, but other people's email clients might not be able to read that image properly. So uh, the image won't show up. You then have to resend them the image becomes a pain in the butt. So use the attach feature in your email client so that when you add a file, it's attached properly to that email and then the people on the other end will see it. You could also just put that email in a public folder of your Dropbox account or your, um, your Google Drive account and share with them the direct link. That way, if they're using a mobile device or something like that, where it has to download the uh, attachment in the email before they can even see it, instead they can and just click on the link and see it in a web browser. Sometimes that experience is much better for mobile than trying to view attachments in an email. So there's lots of different ways that you can be more uh, 
uh, proper in using email. Those are just a couple of items that I think are huge ones that stick out to me. I'll also provide a link down in the description to some other email tips that I think are very uh, important to know. So that's going to do it. Five basic tech tips I think everybody should know. They're going to help you personally. They're going to help you professionally. Uh, check out the links in the description below. They're definitely going to help. Share this video with someone else that you think might find this information useful, especially that person who's always putting your email in the two line along with 20 other people. That person could probably greatly uh, use this video to help them along with uh, becoming a little bit better at using their technology. So that's going to do it. Thanks so much. Click on that subscribe button if you want to get notified of more videos when we put them out. Uh, that little bell next to the subscribe button will get you notified as well. Thanks so much for checking out this video and we hope to see you back here soon on State of Tech.